Yeah, to understand the book of Romans, you, <laughs> I won't say you have to know the Roman history, but man, it, it'll behoove you to know um, the history of Rome in the first century and what, what was it that was happening at that time and really to understand the close relationships we had um, with government officials, you know, people in high places, even Joseph Caiaphas, he was set up by the, but know the history of him being set up by the Roman Empire and they really receiving the authority and authorization kind of gives you an understanding of um, what power Christianity had all right, in the first century and how it was flipping up, you know, uh, nations and, 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 and economies and, 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 and really the decree of Claudius to uh, expel every Israelite from the Roman Empire, right? And then you had Nero who invited them back due to commerce and, and money and trade and, and financial um, resources and he would go on to persecute, all right, all right, the Israelites. But, um, to understand, and, you know, where this replacement theology come from, right? The Israelites leave Rome, uh, the Gentiles continue in the faith, right? And and by the time they came back, you know, there were these huge cultural clashes, all right, between the Jews and between the Gentiles, the believers, you know, believers, all right, in in, in the church, and how you know, you know, this this thing of you know, yeah, yeah, how what. Abandoned it his people, you know, so the, he ain't dealing with you guys. So the importance to understand in the book of Romans, primarily the olive branch, you know, primarily the olive branch, which we're going to get into, um, and just the letter in general. Okay, the letter in general. All praise is going on to your Abba Shimmy Shai. Peace, love, and salutations to the Vayafta without the house of David. All right, I'm the brother of Zion, a friend of Yahweh Shai, coming again with another lesson. Lord willing is insightful. Um, th these things is heavy to understanding. Um, the Most High's ultimate purpose, right? His redemption, uh, right, for Adam, hence humanity, through his son, uh, Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, the anointed, the, 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 the Savior, you know, sent first to Israel and then to, to, to the remnant. All right, uh, of the uh, other nations that are going to cling on, and not just the remnant of the other nations, but also the remnant of Israel that's going to cling on to him. That 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 they be they washed themselves through his blood. All right, they was baptized, and you know they 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 they, they kept righteousness more than men that was of that original stock. Man, the original stock has become corrupted, has become uh, you know uh uh. uh Degenerate plant, all right. Strange, a strange vine unto the Lord Yahweh. So, Lord willing, I want to get into this, and Lord willing, this is edifying. Okay, so let's 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 examine this, right? Let's examine the Book of Romans. So, the book of uh, a book of Romans, and the Spirit's been on me heavy to go into. I write the book of Mormon. Romans 1 and 1, right? Paul is serving Yahweh Shammashiach, called to be a, a apostle, separated unto the gospel, which was had been a promise aforetime by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son Yahweh Shammashiach, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and the decree and declared, all right, to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, by whom receive the glory and apostleship for obedience to faith among all nations for his name, okay? Amongst all nations, amongst all nations, I, I, for his name, amongst whom ye are also called of Yahweh Shah Mashiach, to all be in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace and peace, from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai Hamashi Ak. Okay. In the beginning, Rome goes on to, uh, Paul goes on to talk about how he, he's indebted, all right, to teach the gospel, all right, to the Jew, to the Greek, to the barbarian, to the wise, the unwise. He leaves no stone uncovered. And when you go into that word in Greek, Hellenist, in the blue 
letter uh, Bible, the definition it is anybody and everybody who is not a Jew. So the scriptures is letting you know, and Paul is also letting you know, and by the confirmation of what he's talking about, um, that he is sent to um, preach the word to everybody. Now it's concerning the law that was given to the nation of Israel. What was the purpose of this? He addresses this in the second chapter. He lets you know, um, you know, being a Jew is not one of the flesh. It's not one outwardly. Or being circumcised is not just something of the flesh. Some, your removal of your rod is being circumcised in accordance to the Spirit, which is when you baptize with the Holy Spirit. It's it's the cleansing of your body, the uh, cleansing of your temple. All right, and um. You know, being a Jew inwardly is one according to the spirit, one according to the heart, and not one outwardly. In fact, he goes on to say that the people, uh, the Gentiles, which didn't have the law, they kept the law better than the people that was given the law. And this was a law unto themselves. And this is actually the perfect righteousness that the Most High was looking for. All right. This is the righteousness of Yahweh. It's not one of the letter of the law, but one of the spirit of the law. All right, Paul will go on to let you know that the redemption was from Adam and how death rolled from a death reigned from Adam to Moses. All right, it was through Adam we all died. All right, the covenant was first given to Adam. Okay, the covenant was first given to Adam, and the Lord died to redeem Adam. All right, and ultimately humanity that will fall. He will go on and tell you that during his death and resurrection, uh, you you died and those old ordinances died. All right, on a cross, fleshly sins were nailed on a cross, and, and when you was resurrected, a new man was in you, and you, you, your temple was made, uh, your body was made into a temple in which the inner court was a place in which the Holy Spirit would dwell in you, all right? And you would do the things naturally according to the law, but not to the letter to a T, but you will understand the, understand the spirituality aspect of the law, which is the only way you could be deemed um, righteous, which is, um, it's just, it says justified, which justified means to be found righteous in God's eyes, right? But justification according to the law, the scriptures say no man will be justified according to the law because that would be of self-will, of the flesh, all right? When you Paul talks about the flesh, there's a couple of different meanings. One is race, another one is self-will. And another meaning of the flesh is your, your actual meat, your actual flesh. And it's important to divvy it up as to what is Paul is talking about because he uses that word a lot and he uses it in different terms. So it's important not to get caught up or tripped up in um, what it is that he's saying. All right. So Paul will go on to let you know um, about and then he'll go on to talk about Adam, uh, not Adam, uh, about Abraham, which Abraham uh, received, was found righteous. Before the law, Abraham was circumcised after he proved his faith. So it was the faith that allowed him to become circumcised. It wasn't the circumcision that made um, Abraham righteous, right? It wasn't the law that made Abraham righteous. It was his faith in Yahweh Shai who made um, Abraham righteous. And a lot of men err in this. I'm, I'm starting to notice this too in the New Covenant. Um, you, you make mention of the law, but what is it that you... That you do first. Do you be? Do you do you uh, believe with faith first, and then accept Yahweh Shai, okay? And Yahweh Shai enters into you, and then you do by uh, naturally the things that are right, just according to the law, right? That's what you should be doing. And anybody that's doing or saying anything else, they're off. All right, you're not gonna be just. If, you're not gonna follow the law and make yourself righteous, you know, and then go to Yahweh. That's not how that works. All right. This is the reason why Paul gave the example of of Adam of of Abraham, which he was deemed righteous four hundred years before the law was even given on tablets. All right. So there's a, a righteousness that was from the beginning. <laughs> All right, from the beginning that you know you know. So let's let's keep this into a proper perspective, right? So it goes on. Then it goes and says, "Shall what? Shall we sin that grace may abound?" Because somebody may say that okay. Uh, 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 we're shitting on the law. Is this excluding the law? Or we no, 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 we don't. We establish the law, all right, not according to the letter and to the T, but in spirit. So now we're, you know, if Yahweh Shah is in you, man, you ain't gonna, you, nobody, you don't, you're not gonna sleep with, you're not gonna commit adultery, you're not gonna fornicate, you're not gonna steal from your brother, you're not gonna hate your brother in your heart, 
You're not going to um, throw curses up on your brother. You know, you're not going to do these things. Like, this is this is what the scriptures is saying, right? And now, when you get to the 8th, uh, uh, Romans 9, uh, Romans 9, 10, and 11, this is the climax of the scriptures, right? Romans 9, 10, and 11 is the climax. And what happens is, it's lucky as I go through here, um, what happens is, is that, what happens is, is, the, the Bible being separated separated in uh, verses and chapters, right, really does the book of Romans a disservice because this book is a letter. This is a letter that's supposed to be read out in full contents, right? So when you be doing that jumping around in, in, in the book of Romans, like, <laughs> Rome, Paul didn't just abandon it what he said in Romans the ninth chapter concerning salvation being only for the Jews. This is not the contents of what's being said. The contents of what's being said in Romans, um, the eighth chapter, ninth chapter is Paul is lamenting and he's pleading. He's hurt. He's hurt. He wishes he was cut off. That word cut off meaning basically what's about to happen to the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel is about to suffer a, 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 a grooming defeat. All right. Because they seek uh, out. They, this, he will go on and say that they sought out righteousness in accordance to the law of Moses, in which the Gentiles, they didn't have that law, and they sought out Yahweh Shai through faith, all right, they did it naturally, okay, so let's, let's, now let's get into this, let's get into this beautifully, right, uh, Romans, uh, chapter 9, verse 1, I say the truth in Yahweh Shai, I lie not, my conscience also bearing me witness of the Holy Spirit, that I have great heaviness and continued sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were a curse from Yahweh Shai, my brethren, my kinsmen, according to the flesh. That word of curse means to be cut off forever. You know, you, you people, your spirits, the, the majority of the Israelites that are on this earth, their spirits are about to dwell in, in, in torment and pain and sorrow and suffering forever. They're never going to see daylight. They're never going to behold the majesty and the glory of God. They're never going to have children. They're never going to have a glass of wine. They're never going to ride a chariot like they, they think that they're going to do. They're never, they're never going to uh, see these things. They're going to be cut off from the presence of God forever according to the Holy Bible, which we believe 100% to be the word of the Heavenly Father. No doubt in our mind. We don't think nothing was a um, contextual error. We don't think James went off. We, we don't question Paul's authority. We don't make up doctrines. We don't teach things we don't believe in. Right? We 100% we, 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 we stand on the truth as to what it is that the scriptures are saying. All right? So Paul is really concerned here about Israel. This is what this is about. Then he will go on and tell you that not all Israel is of Israel. Let's go. Just go to six, right? Um, uh, matter of fact, so let's go. It says, uh, "Who are Israelites to pretend if the adoption, the glory, the covenants, and the giving of the law and the services of God and the promises? Who are the fathers in whom, as concerning the flesh, the race which Yahweh Shah came out of, not for the flesh who he came for." But the flesh and who he came out of, all right, who is all over, blessed forever. It is not though the word of God have took a non-effect, for they are not all Israel, which are Israel. So here's the point here, right? Now, is, he, is Paul contradicting himself? He goes on to, tell, to make mention about these Gentiles and how they're going to be accepted and how the Heavenly Father sent his only begotten son, all right, to die for them, to, to break down that wall of petition, right? He goes on to tell you these things. And now he goes on to tell you about uh, this in, in, in the ninth chapter. Is he contradicting himself? No, he's not contradicting himself. All right? He's destroying that idea of replacement theology, which was in the first uh, century after the Jews were expelled, all right, from Rome uh, by Claudius and brought back by Nero, ultimately ended up being Nero being the main persecutor of Israel. Um, but he's going on to explain to you that the Lord has not got rid of his people and he has left the remnant. So those people that were the Gentiles that were cheating the Jews bad as if the Heavenly Father had casted them off, 
he was addressing this. It's only once you understand his history does uh, the olive tree and the branches make sense on why he's saying thou being a wild olive branch, you know, don't boast against the tree. All right, because you could be broken off again and that tree, that branch that was broken off, it could be added back on naturally. But you were, were drafted in unnaturally. Come on, man. Come on. That's why Romans 10 and 1 says, Brethren, my heart's uh -huh. desires and prayers to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For I bear them record that they have the zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness and having gone about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe. These people went about to establish righteousness in accordance to the law and that wasn't it. All while omitting the weedier matters or the most important matters of the law which is love, grace, mercy, tenderhearted, being kind, loving your brother like you love yourself, it became a black and white thing. It became a rinse and repeat type of thing. It wasn't natural because the scriptures will go on and tell you that the law couldn't make you change your, change, uh, uh, make, the, the law couldn't make you change your heart. But Yahweh Shai could. Yahweh Shai can. All right. His commands being put on your inward part is through faith. All right. It's through faith, right? Let me go on to Romans 11. Uh, one, I say then, have God cast away his people? God forbid. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What you not know what the scriptures say of lies? How is he make of intercession for God against Israel? Lord, they have killed thy prophets and dig down thy altars, and I am left alone, and they seek my life. But he, uh, what saith the answer of God to him? I have reserved to myself seven thousand men that will not bow the knee to the image of Baal. All right, so now he's just dressing this. Like, look, don't be proud, all right? That replacement theology is bullshit, all right? Just because he allowed you guys to enter in and worship him, all right? And uh, uh, to fulfill the prophecy concerning uh, th those that blessed the nation of Israel would be blessed through his son, all right? And, and you guys left off from your idols, all right, you left off from your wicked ways, your idolatry, you abstained from eating um, things, suffered, s sacrificed to idols and uh, your little blood rituals and things of that nature. You know, don't be too proud. So before you could read Romans the 11th chapter to understand what it is that he's saying, it's a, a very important that you understand the history and how we led up to here. This is not just... A uh, random, you can't just pick and choose random lines or bars, all right, from this letter because it's all cohesive, it all goes together, all right. Now, um, I'm gonna leave it there because I'm gonna set it up. Me and a brother is going to do a lesson, I'm Lord willing. This is edifying concerning, um, the, the, the drafting of the Gentiles, okay, the drafting up of the Gentiles, the wild olive branch. Okay, to understand, you know, um, the Most High's beautiful plan, man. All right, and this is the mystery of the Gentiles. I'll close with that. Uh, Romans, uh, chapter, uh, Romans chapter 16, verse 24. The grace of our Lord, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, be with you all. Amen. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to, to my gospel and the preaching of Yahweh Shahamashiach according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret from the beginning of the world but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of truth. To God only wise be the glory through Yahweh Shai forever. Amen. All right. So with that, this is just the introduction to or prelude to the understanding concerning which a lot of men don't get. I've seen these brothers trying to 
break this down on the highways and it just they you they didn't feel right in their spirit and what they were saying. They really they really don't understand when you when you replace the Gentiles with Israelites, man, that, that's terrible. You really you really confuse yourself, man. You really don't understand what it is. Um and just it's just it just if these, these you you allow you cleanse out your temple, man, you you're really gonna understand this easily. This is gonna be understood easily. Our praise is that you 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 brothers repent and you 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 allow the word to take precedence. You don't gotta you know um you don't gotta you don't gotta take nothing away from it. All right, shalom.